I want you to please work through example 1.3 on your own. You'll see the suggested solution is very detailed and I include comments to support all of the calculations, so I doubt you'll have any problems. But obviously, if you do struggle with anything, please just pop me an email. This example is important because it shows you how to correctly identify whether a cost is fixed, variable, or semi-variable when we are dealing with a company that is in the service industry. It also shows you how to deal with fixed income and VAT. So please work through this example and make sure that you are comfortable with the principles addressed. Then example 1.4 is important because it shows you how it's possible for a company to report profits in their annual financial statements when they sell less units than the break-even point. Now, if a company sells less units than the break-even point, I would expect them to report a loss. So how is it possible for them to report a profit if they sell less units than the break-even point? You are the management accountant of Bromfield Limited and you correctly calculated the break-even point as follows. So you've calculated the break-even point in units, you've performed the calculation correctly, and you've got an answer of 120,000 units. Now before we move on, I want you to make sense of the information provided in this calculation. We know that total fixed costs amount to 4.8 million rand, we also know that the contribution per unit is calculated by taking the selling price per unit and deducting the variable cost per unit. So the selling price per unit is 100 Rand and the variable cost per unit is 60 Rand. So that means we have a contribution per unit of 40 Rand. During the year, Bromfield actually produced 150,000 units and they sold 105,000 units. So you can see they actually sold less units than the break-even point. Although they sold less units than the break-even point, they are reporting a profit of 840,000 Rand in the annual financial statements. So if you have a look at the required, how is it possible for Bromfield Limited to report profits in the annual financial statements when they sell less units than the break-even point? Now, if you refer back to the assumptions of CVP, you'll remember that we said, when performing these calculations, fixed manufacturing costs are treated as period costs and they are expensed in the period that they are incurred. So cost volume profit analysis is consistent with the principles of variable costing. Because when performing the statement of comprehensive income using variable costing, fixed manufacturing costs are also expensed in the period incurred. We only include variable manufacturing costs in the value of inventory. So just below you can see we have the statement of comprehensive income that has been prepared using variable costing. So when calculating cost of sales, only variable manufacturing costs have been taken into account. So the variable manufacturing cost per unit was 60 Rand and they produced 150,000 units. They sold 105,000 units. So that means we have 45,000 units sitting in closing inventory. And because we are using variable costing, when I value closing inventory, I only take my variable manufacturing costs into account. And you can see just below, the fixed manufacturing costs are expensed in the period incurred. So if the statement of comprehensive income is prepared using variable costing, Bromfield will report a loss. An alternative way of performing this calculation is by saying the break-even point is 120,000 units. 
they actually sold 105,000 units. So they've sold 15,000 units less than the break-even point. And if we multiply that by the contribution per unit, we'll get the loss. So we can see that this break-even point calculation is consistent with the principles of a variable costing, because if we prepare the statement of comprehensive income using variable costing, they report a loss. Now go back to the required. How is it possible for Bromfield Limited to report profits in their annual financial statements when they sell less units than the break-even point? And that is because annual financial statements are not prepared using variable costing. Your annual financial statements need to comply with IAS 2, which means we are using absorption costing. And with absorption costing, remember fixed manufacturing costs are not treated as period costs. They are not expensed in the period incurred. Instead, fixed manufacturing costs are included in the value of inventory. So this is very important. If we had to prepare this statement using absorption costing, we would include fixed manufacturing costs in the value of closing inventory. So closing inventory would include both variable and fixed manufacturing costs, meaning the value of closing inventory would be higher if we were using absorption costing. Now, if the value of closing inventory is higher, then cost of sales would be lower because closing inventory is deducted when calculating cost of sales. And if cost of sales is lower, profits will be higher. So that's how it is possible for them to report profits in their annual financial statements if they sell less units than the break-even point. Remember, guys, what's sitting in closing inventory over here is not expensed in this period. Closing inventory reduces cost of sales. Closing inventory is still sitting as an asset on the statement of financial position. This will only be expensed in the next period when it's added back as opening inventory. All right, so I've gone through all of that discussion with you. I just want to look at the recon. I want us to reconcile the variable costing loss to the absorption costing profit as per their annual financial statements. So just take the variable costing loss that we calculated from the statement of comprehensive income. So we calculated a loss of 600,000 rand. Now remember guys, the only difference between variable costing and absorption costing is the fixed costs that are sitting in opening and closing inventory. Now in this example, we don't have any opening inventory, so it's just the closing inventory. So calculate the fixed costs that are sitting in closing inventory. Total fixed costs were 4.8 million rand. The company produced 150,000 units and they have 45,000 units sitting in closing inventory. So we have fixed costs of 1.44 million rand sitting in closing inventory. So this portion of fixed costs are not being expensed in this period. Instead, they are being deferred to future periods. In the future, when the inventory is sold, then that amount will be expensed. And that's how it's possible for the company to report a profit of 840,000 rand in their annual financial statements. Remember, with variable costing over here, the full fixed manufacturing cost of 4.8 million rand is expensed in the period incurred. With absorption costing, part of the fixed cost, the portion that's sitting in closing inventory, is not expensed. It's deferred to future periods. And that is the reason why management accountants prefer to use variable costing for decision-making purposes.